What's up everyone? I'm Travis and you're watching another episode of Upgraded RC. Welcome back guys. In this video, we're going to be installing Hot Racing's CNC Machine Brass Portal Steering Knuckles onto our SCX-10 III JT Gladiator here. Now, Hot Racing is saying that if you install these, you're going to be adding 95 grams of weight to each wheel. That's pretty good. And you know, Hot Racing has been very accurate in the past as far as our diff covers and the other brass stuff that I've installed. They've been pretty much dead on their weight. We're going to go ahead and weigh it and make sure they weigh what they say they weigh. And then we're going to install them and we're going to see how much it's increased our climbing capabilities by as well as our traction on the front end. Now, I did notice in this package, guys, I'm going to open it up and show you what's in here, but I did notice that it's just the inner part of the portal housing. The cover is not included in this kit. I tried to get the covers. They don't have them locally here in town, so I'm waiting on them. So you will see me installing these inner housings with the old black plastic covers on them. And as soon as I get the other ones in, I'll just put them right back on. I probably won't make a video on that, but I'm also waiting for the ones in the rear. But we're going to put these front ones on and see what happens. Let's see what we got in the package here, guys. Okay, so in our package here, we have got our assortment of our stainless steel Allens. This is our hardware pack. Uh, Hot Racing is really good about sending out all the hardware you need so you don't have to dig through your kit and try to make something work. And here is the housing assembly. That's pretty nice. All CNC, it feels like it weighs about 95, and usually it's stamped on here somewhere along with their, oh, there it is right there. I don't know if you can see this, but there is their Hot Racing logo right there. Just below that, it says 95G, 95 grams. So let's weigh these and see if this is actually what they weigh. But besides that, let's see what else we got here. We got the other side and a sticker. Sometimes they send you stickers and sometimes they don't. I guess I didn't get screwed on this one. Come over here to our trusty scale. Let's see what these weigh. Okay, our scale's at zero. Let's we'll see what these bad boys weigh. So for one, it is, wow, exactly 95, just like they said. That, that's pretty good. And the other one, the other one is off just a little bit, 93.8. Well, if we put them both together, we're going to have a combined weight today of 188.8 grams that we are adding to our vehicle. Okay, so we ended up with 95 exactly on one and 93.8 on the other one. Now I've done a fair amount of machining in the past, so I know that what happened is the programs that they use to make these, because one's left and one's right, there is a difference. The program was off just a little bit. They probably shaved just a little bit too much brass off of one of these pieces here because the parameters weren't set exactly to where they needed to be for the left and the right. They were a hair different. But you know what, guys? 1.2 grams is not very much at all. That's almost nothing. But between the two of these, we have 188.8 grams. Now, if you do the math, that's exactly 11.8 ounces, almost 12 ounces, guys. It's 16 ounces is a pound. So that kind of gives you an idea how much we're adding to this. So I don't think that's going to be bad. I don't think that little bit's going to change anything. Let's go ahead and install these and see what they do. All right, so this is going to be a fairly easy install. There's two ways you could really do this. I mean, number one, you could just take off your tire and your wheel here and then remove this Allen that connects your tie rod to your steering knuckle and then remove your top and bottom step bolts that connect the steering knuckle to the axle and the whole portal housing would just slide right out then you could change out your piece, rebuild it, regrease it, and put it back together. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove the entire axle on mine because I've got a couple things I want to do. I want to check my grease. I'd really like to check and make sure that my Allens are still tight on my ring that's holding it onto the locker, and I have some adjustments to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take this all off, and it'll just be a little bit easier for me to, to do this. But you could do it the other way really quickly, just depending on what you want to do.
So for all of you guys who are following me or have watched any of my videos in the past, I'm sure you've probably seen me rip the axles off here at least a couple times. It's super simple, not a big deal at all. For everyone out there who has never seen this done, I'm just gonna show you real quick. Okay, I'm not gonna take the time to, to take everything off step by step and show you exactly what's going on. I'm just going to pinpoint the pieces and the allens you need to remove to get your axle out easily. If you need the step-by-step -step instructions, go watch one of my previous videos. I believe it's uh, number six where I'm installing the brass diff covers and I take the axle completely off, clean it, paint it, lube it, put it back together, adjust it, you'll be able to see everything. But anyway guys, so real quick here, so you can go ahead and take off the tires left and right. Go ahead and take off the lower mount to your shock left and right. This will release both of the shocks from your axle. It will also release both of the lower links from your axle. Now you also have an upper link on your axle you'll need to remove. And then this tie rod right here is held on by an Allen in the top of each one of your steering knuckles. Go ahead and remove both of those Allens to remove your tie rod. This will also release your steering link here from the steering knuckle. And then the last thing you've got is your pan hard bar. And I would probably release that from the axle. It's a little bit easier to get to. Once you take all that off, your drive shaft will fall out and the axle will be free in your hands. Let's go ahead and get there. So once you get your axle ripped out of there, now we can go ahead and remove these step bolts. There's one on the bottom and there's one on the top right here on each side. As soon as you get those out, then we can just slide our whole portal assembly right out of the axle. So now that we've got our portal housing assembly removed from the axle, we can go ahead and disassemble this. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take this Allen out of your 12 millimeter hex here. This is what holds your hex to your shaft. After that, go ahead and remove these four Allens here that hold the cover on. That way we can get inside. This will release all of the bearings and gears and components. We can switch them to the other side. Okay, so after we get our Allens out of the cover, we can go ahead and separate and remove the cover from the housing by pulling it off. Now you'll notice there is a bearing here and there's also a bearing on the bottom which is stuck to our shaft right now. But if you had the other cover, which I don't, you'd want to remove these bearings and install them in the other cover. Now, same thing with this side. If we take both of our gears out and the shaft, you can see the two bearings on this side of the housing that need to be removed. Both of these two need to be installed over here. Now, these should just pop right out. If you have any problems getting them out, you could use a small pick or something like that. Just be careful with them. You don't want to destroy these bearings. And once you get them out, I would go ahead and make sure that they turn freely. There's no issues with them. There's no binding, no grittiness. Otherwise, you're just going to have to take it apart and replace these again if these bearings are bad. Now, the other thing you're going to want to really watch out here for, guys, on your gears here, you can take this apart and see this pin right here that slides out of your shaft. Now, when you pull this gear off, it's very important that it's put back on in the same relationship. This gear will go on both ways, okay? It can go this way or it can go this way. Now, the problem here is on the inside here, this groove where your little pin rides, one side is a little bit more rounder than the other, and one side is a little bit more square than the other. You have a round pin. You are looking for the round side so that it sits in there nice and flush and it's a good fit and there's not any movement. If you put this pin on the wrong side and the square side, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna hear clicking your portal axles. You'll be moving along, you'll hear click, click, click. It's because this pin is not fitting as good in the square side as it would in the round side. So make sure you pay attention to the relationship when you take that apart, it's very important. Uh, it took me a while to figure this out when I took it apart the first time, because I just ripped it apart. I didn't know which way it went. So I went ahead and used a magnifying glass and a pick and just kind of looked in here really good so that I could figure out which side was rounder than the other side. It's pretty hard to see, it's very deceiving. Once I did that, I went ahead and put a mark here with a black marker so that I would know every time exactly which way that goes. And just so you know, as you're putting it back together, the bearing is on the bottom, your threads are on the bottom. This goes on like this, oops, sorry. This goes on here like this, and then your pin goes in through the top. 
like so, and you pull it tight and you can see your black mark there, you know that you were in the correct way. That's how it goes. So pay attention to that. Other than that, go ahead and grease the stuff back up and put it back together. Okay, when I was putting this back together, I did end up using the smaller stainless steel Allens that came in the kit. Uh, the stock longer ones were just a little bit too long. So I went ahead and used those. The other thing I'd like to point out is when I'm putting my step bolts back in here, I went ahead and used a little bit of Loctite on it. That way they wouldn't back out of the brass. Because what I like to do here with the step bolts is I like to put them in and take them all the way down until it stops or seats. Then I very gently just crack it and that's it that's all i give and look at the free play that i've got here i mean it moves so freely that's how you want to do it if you have this too tight right here it's going to put a tremendous amount of strain on your servo so just make sure you crack it enough to you or you've got free play here and with the added weight of this brass it seems like it doesn't need to be as loose as the plastic did to get it to spin freely um, i went down quite a bit further with these than i did with the plastic so just make sure those spin freely, put a little bit of Loctite on them, make sure they don't back out. The other thing is, when you're putting your, your 12 millimeter hex back on, I would go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on the threads on that small Allen there as well, so that doesn't back out either. Once you get that done, we can go ahead and put it back together. Well, there it is, all mounted up. I think they look pretty good on there. I went ahead and turned my car and my radio on. Let's make sure there's no binding issues. We want to go back and forth real slow here and make sure that nothing is touching or binding. I'm going to compress my suspension here. We're going to try it again. Wow, everything looks like it's doing pretty good, guys. I don't really see any issues there. I think it's going to be great. That was impressive. So I wasn't really sure if I'd like the looks of it or not, but actually I think it looks really good. It definitely makes it look a little bit tougher, a little bit beefier, and there is no doubt about it, it is heavier. So guys, my thoughts on this upgrade were awesome. This is a great upgrade. I am proud to say this is my number nine upgrade. I probably should have done it sooner. I went out and wheeled the hell out of this right after I got done putting it together so that I could tell you guys how it performed, if it was worth it or not, if there was any issues that I had. You know what? I can't believe that adding that little bit of weight to the front tires here gave it so much more traction. I mean, these tires came to life like they've never done before. I guess when you're climbing a really steep hill, the first thing you notice, and it's probably because all your weight's kind of lifting off the tires, your tires start to spin because it's not heavy enough to keep them on the ground. The next thing you know is your vehicle starts rearing up and then it flips over backwards and you're done. You never made it up the steep hill you're on. Well, I went up hills with this that I could never get up before and it walked up it like nothing. I, I couldn't believe it. I think it was great. Now, some of the cons that I did notice here, because I don't have any brass in the rear yet or any accessories and it's kind of light, when I was coming down the hills really slow on a really steep hill, I noticed the ass end wanted to pick up a little bit and it kind of wanted to maybe endo or cartwheel over. So if I came down it faster, it was okay. Now, once I get the brass for the rear and the covers, I'm assuming it's gonna take care of that problem. Not a big problem if you know how to drive correctly though. The other small issue that I had is that this is heavier. So it's going to put more stress on your motor and obviously it's gonna put a lot more stress on your servos. Your servos are trying to turn these brass 
portal housings that weigh a lot more than the plastic did, it's obviously putting more stress on it. Now, today I didn't have any problems when I was out there wheeling. The stock servo held up just fine. I don't know if it's going to hold up in the future. Maybe when I get in some really tight, aggressive terrain or hard spots to get out of, or maybe it's just slowly wearing out the motor or the gears. I don't know. I will be installing an upgraded, probably Reef's uh, servo or Savix here in the future. I'll do a video on that. For right now, this one is working out just fine, but that's really the only two issues I see, and it's all based on the weight. So this was awesome. I had a good time, guys. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot. And I, I, I can't believe that we just got that much traction out of that weight. That's just awesome. So that's going to wrap this video up. And just like always, guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or anything, don't hesitate to comment down below. And I will try to answer your question to the best of my ability. If I can't answer it, I'll tell you where you can go to have it answered. And I may not get back with you right away, but if you leave me a comment and a question, I promise you I will get back with you as soon as I possibly can. Have fun. Go crawl. Go bash. Go do whatever you guys do that makes you happy. I am Travis. You're watching Upgraded RC. Until video number 10, which is just right around the corner, Peace out!